Welcome everybody. This is Today in Trades. Jim Evans here. Oh, what an exciting day that we have. Um, one of the icons in the industry, somebody that I respect deeply as a, as a person, uh, but also just a, a leader um, and a fantastic human, um, as well as just a sharp businessman. Um, Max Perelstein's on with us, and he's going to talk today about um, all sorts of things. He's got he's got an amazing story, an American story, and um, he also has an amazing gift to offer our industry, uh, as well as many other industries. And so, Max, I am excited to have you on the podcast today. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to be here, and uh, and and thank you for that great introduction. That's uh, very humbling and uh, much appreciated. Uh, I feel a, a lot of the same things about you, Jim. You've done uh, amazing things. So thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. Well, let's let's get into it. So I had the chance to meet Max, and when we first uh, we got into the room together, and I just wanted to get to know who he was a little bit, I found out that he is um, a multi generation glass guy, or as we call a glass brat in the industry. I don't know if that's a good term and an endearing term or a, a bad term, but he, he grew up. And I, so I want to hear, Max, how did you come into, first of all, glass? How did, what's your background in our industry and how did you, how did you get into it? Sure. Definitely a family. It was a family thing. Uh, great grandfather came over in 1898 with $34 in his pocket and a glass cutter. Uh, and, and he was a glass guy, you know, and what's interesting was his last name was actually Moshkovitz. It wasn't Pearlstein, but at that time when he came over and the customs people, you know, they, they, they would ask two questions. What's your, what's your name and what do you do? And, and so he didn't speak very good English and he actually repeated, this is the way the story has been told over the years. He repeated what the guy in front of him said, and the guy in front of him happened to be a glass person. And my great grandfather just repeated everything he said. So the name got changed at that time to Perelstein, which, uh, you know, you know, is danger glass. Uh, but, but that's how it stood in 1898. And so the name got changed from Moshkovitz to Perelstein. And he started in Philadelphia uh, as a glass guy delivering glass by bicycle uh, and in any way possible. And, uh, you know, he then had kids that, that got into the business and they had locations in New York and Pennsylvania, you know, Pittsburgh, all the way west is Oklahoma. Uh, and they were doing everything. They were glazing. They were, you know, fabricating, you know, anything to do with glass. Uh, obviously, my grandfather was heavily into it. And then my dad uh, was big into it. And my brother uh, and sister uh, were huge into it. Me, I wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, you know, I was kind of the baby of the family. So uh, the, the way the family business went is in 1968, that original company that started in 1898, which was H. Pearlstein Glass, got sold. Uh, it got sold to a big, you know, Fortune 500 New York Stock Exchange company called Chromaloy, which is no longer around. Uh, they, uh, you know, ran the business. My dad decided in 1977 to start again. Uh, and so he wow. started Pearlstein Distributing Corporation. Uh, and that's where he and my brother and my sister built that business up. Uh, and I, I joined it in 1991. Uh, and I had, uh, I had no desire, as I said earlier, to be in this business. Uh, but my brother told me, he said, it's in your blood. Give it a shot. Uh, I was in sports production. I was working at the NBC affiliate in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I, I was somewhat enjoying life, but it was a tough, it's tough. It, you know, being in, in, in television is not as glamorous as people think, uh, especially when you're behind the camera, you know, it's a, a different yeah. story. And, uh, and so he said, give it a shot. And he was right. I fell in love with it from, from really day one. Uh, it was a tremendous, uh, tremendous, you know, uh, you know, uh, excitement in my bones and he was right it was in my blood and uh, kind of the rest is history which i'm sure we'll talk about but it started in 91 and uh you know moved through you know moved through that company and and you know uh, eventually grew to running the marketing uh for that organization and then moved uh to another organization within our family another family business arch aluminum and glass which all comes from the there's a cousin that all comes from that same the same great grandfather uh, worked with them as their chief marketing officer for eight years, uh, then had a quick cup of coffee at Vitro and then started my own business in 2011. Wow. Holy cow. Sorry, that was long. No, geez, that's a, that's a, that was a lot there. 18, so 1898, I can't imagine that feeling. Coming, out, coming to America, you've got your, your skill, you have your hope, and you have your name. And I just thought that's uh, such a cool story. And I mean, so many of us can't even touch that in the sense of just what a legacy and, and good on you for giving it a shot. And I think sometimes it's easy to 
want to just not do what our legacy is. And um, I think there's also just an amazing American story and amazing power and staying with what you do. And then what I love is you can take what your legacy is and you can put your touch on it. And each, it sounds to me that each of, um, of your great grandfather's um, children and, and, and nieces and nephews and gra- great grandkids, that everyone kind of put their own touch on the industry. And this industry is very big. And obviously a big part of today in trades is trying to show this industry and all of the home services industry and the trades that it can be an exciting career where you can touch marketing, you can touch consulting, you can bring your touch to it, you can make it yours. You don't just have to do it exactly the way that it was done before. In fact, that's a systemic problem is to be doing it the way it was done before. And that's the segue into what you do now and what I love about what you do now. Um, If we've learned anything, you know, in, in Today in Trades is brought to us by Big Clips, of course, that's the sponsor that's who lets this podcast happen. And if, if anything, we have new tools, we have new ways to do business. The world is changing rapidly. And you're sitting here with sole source consultants and you are the managing partner, from what I understand. And I want to talk about that company because often you get lumped in with all of your clients. And I want to talk today about Max Berylstein, sole source consultants, um, and what your desire there has been, what you do inside that company, and how are you putting your, your touch on things today? Sure, sure. So, you know, basically what happened was, is, you know, in 2011, when I started this, you know, a lot of this, you know, my brother was, was a big, uh, you know, push on this. He, uh, he, you know, he, he pointed out, he said, he said, you have so many contacts in the industry because by 2011, I had sat on the board of the Glass Association of North America. I had been running the Building Envelope Contractor Show, the BEC show that happens every spring. I had hosted that several times. I was, I was on their, on their prim, uh, programming committee. Uh, and so I had made a lot of contacts. And he said, you know, you like helping people, you know, instead of just going f- to work for another company, why don't you start your own thing? And I said, you know, do you really think it could work? And he, he said, yeah, I really do. I think that you have, you know, a lot of connections, use them. And it got me to thinking and the, the whole thought process out of the gate was, how can I help people and make it easier on them? And that's where the name Soul Source came, because a lot in the specs said, you know, soul, you know, soul source in the specs, a single source. And so I wanted to create a company where when it came to marketing or communication strategy, anything that, that the company needed to be able to promote themselves with, they could make one phone call to me. And I would have the answer or I would have the service or I could point them to the service uh, Mm -hmm. and and work it that way. And so it was an easy, you know, single source, one phone call kind of does it all with anything in those areas. And it's expanded over the years into, you know, market studies and and commercialization of new products and so on. But the goal initially was, hey, let's see what we can do to help people. And it's still the same today is I, I. I, I'm probably not the greatest marketer of myself because I don't like self-promoting. I like promoting other people. I like pushing other people and I like sitting kind of in the background. Uh, and, and I love, you know, when, when people get recognition, it's the greatest thing in the world because mm-hmm. so many folks just never get that sunlight on them ever. And when they do, right. it energizes them. And that makes my day. That's what I live for. And that's the same with the projects. You know, people do beautiful projects in this industry and very, you know, very often they don't get recognized. So I like to bring that out. So what, what happened was, is I created this company that it started off with the basic, you know, marketing 101 sort of things. How can I help people market their companies, improve or replace their websites, help them with, with advertising, help them with public relations, uh, you know, anything to do with communication. And I, so I, I slowly but surely, be, you know, changed it over to a communication strategy play because that became so important with social media. Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Instagram? What are they doing with that? Are they, you know, using video? You know, are they utilizing YouTube? That, that sort of thing. And so that's how I've helped people uh, over the last 10 years is, you know, improving their overall kind of, you know, delivery to market of themselves, of their companies, uh, and, and also bringing them new ideas. You know, things like bid clips, I fell in love with. I thought it was unbelievable. And, you know, it was, it was a pleasure for me to say, hey, you need to look at this. You know, you need to take a look at it sort of thing and, you know, send people to your site or send people to your booth. And I believe it and I will continue to do it because it's a great service. And that's what I do. And I don't get anything from that. But if they do it, it's great, you know, because the better they are, the better I am at the end of the day. And hopefully they remember that. And the other thing that's happened is, is as I've helped people out, 
you know, it, it's come back to me. Uh, you know, I have uh, a guy named Ron Parker, who I'm friends with, who is a unbelievable operations consultant. He is the best plant guy I've ever worked with. He's brilliant. And he's on an occasion, you know, I've, you know, said to him, Hey, this, this client needs work in the warehouse badly. They're they're You know, the structure's not there. The systems are not there and he can go and fix it. And then when he hears from them, Hey, you know, another customer where he might be at, Hey, you know, our website's a mess. We need to fix this. You know, he says, Hey, hey I've got a guy for you. And that's how it's, it's worked over these last 10 years. And so I'm just a, a, a guy that's here to help. Uh, and I, I live that each and every day. And I love networking uh, and love to meet people. So getting to meet you, which I hadn't done, it opened up a whole new range of things for me. And it, and it, and it was funny because it's like the, you know, it, the picture of networking by meeting you, you know, you got introduced to a lot of my network and I got introduced to a lot of yours. And that's what it's all about. Uh, and that's how we all get better. You know, what I love about this the most, Max, is that, um, you know, our listeners, hopefully you're hearing um, between the lines of Max. Not only does he know what to do and can help your little business of all sizes, by the way, I think sometimes Max, you get pin- pigeoned into like these big business, big companies, you know, the medium size, the smaller ones, like there's so much you can bring from your experience to just the the six person shop or the, the million dollar operation or the $500,000 operation. But in between the lines, everybody Max promotes others and gets excitement out of it. Uh, Zig Ziglar used to say, if you get help, other people get what they want. You'll have everything that you need. And I live, but try to live by that philosophy every day as much as we can. And how are we doing that to our own employees? How are we doing that to our customers? And so not only with Max and with Soul Source Consultants, can you have some hard skills? You know, what's a marketing strategy? Um, what's some, what are some better technologies, et cetera? I want you to hear that perhaps Max can help bring forth that culture, the culture of care, the culture of selflessness, the culture of, of really love, love of, of what you're doing and your passion. And so I hope all of you can hear that. that he's the real deal. And um, you. Max, let's, let's start diving into some of these, these things. So I both envy you because I love helping people and I love coaching and I love to help people get better. I truly get a high when I see people, you know, grow and, um, but, you know, we don't always listen to consultants. Um, right. You know, I, I also am like, I don't know if I'd want Max's job also, because, man, there's one thing to take the, the horse to the water and then there's nothing to like jam the horse's head and be like, you need to drink the water. <laughs> so oh. well, it's really tough. And so for our, our listeners, you know, driving around in their vans or trucks or, or watching at home, um, let's imagine that we actually listen to you. <laughs> we actually did what you said. And this is businesses as small as our, our little listeners are just getting started. You know, we have a bunch of entrepreneurs who are just coming into the industry that are listening. And then we have some big dogs, or big companies listening. For all of us sitting here, our mouths shut, our ears up, we're ready to actually do stuff. What are some of the key things you see in today's industries that we need to do and we need to look out for at a high level? Well, I, I mean, I, I think the, the number one thing is just the way you present yourself because it, it not only affects you from a sales standpoint and, and a business you know, standpoint, but it also affects you right now and, and extremely importantly on, on your workforce and developing your workforce and attracting new workforce. It's, it's your culture. So, you know, when people go online and they see, you know, that, that you know, it, it, they check you out on LinkedIn and they see you haven't posted anything, you haven't done anything as a company, you haven't promoted uh, yourself as a company, you haven't promoted any of your people or mentioned any of your people, you know, that's a culture thing. And, and when you don't show the jobs, you know, people sometimes look back at that and say, hey, I, you know, I don't really, I don't understand why you're not promoting the work that you do. You know, a lot of folks work very hard to, to, to build that building and, and, you know, put the glass in that or whatever the case may be. So I think it all starts with the way you're presenting yourself because, A, you know, people, that's how they find you to use you, you know, whether it's residential and they see, you know, what, what the shower door you just installed or, you know, the windows you just replaced. And also that's how people decide on whether they want to work for you or continue to work for you. Uh, mm-hmm. It's that culture building sort of thing. So I believe you know, the way you're presenting yourself is, is number one right now. And you don't have to spend a ton of money on your website or your, your social media. It's just, it's just making a schedule, making a plan and keeping up with it. Uh, Mm -hmm. And that to me is the biggest thing. And a lot of folks have great intentions of doing it. And then it falls by the wayside because they don't see it as a priority. But the problem is, is others notice it. They, They notice it when it, when it becomes dormant. 
And, and that then becomes a problem. You don't have to be on there 24 seven, but you have to try to keep it active. Uh, and that's with everything that you do. And I, I just think it more than ever, it touches all of that. 10 years ago, I don't think we had to worry as much about culture, you know, and, right. and, and it was a challenge to get employees still 10 years ago, but now, you know, it's a very discerning, I've got a 21 year old daughter and she checks things out before she starts at a place or tries mm -hmm. to apply to a place. She's just graduated college. She's trying to find a job and that's what she's looking at. So I'm looking at through her mm -hmm. eyes and we mm -hmm. need to do better to show ourselves off. We do great things in this industry. You know, the shower enclosures that people put up are amazing. The backsplashes, the tabletops, the shelves, I can go on and on. We do so many great things. And then we have new technology, transparent solar, you know, that, that's going to blow people away. That's going to change our world. We do that. Yeah. And so we need yeah. to promote that. Wow. Awesome. So a couple of cool things just came out of that. So um, to kind of, you know, dovetail what you're saying. I think it's important. Something I, I was fortunate enough to learn from another mentor like you is that our biggest client should be our people. And I'll be honest, yes. I, we, we're, met, we're, we're, we're hiring three or four new account executives right now. And I'm more nervous about making sure that we have presented ourselves well to them, let them see our culture, know the product, make sure I'm hearing what they need for their life and their career, making sure they feel cared about and, and pressure. I put as much time to that than I do like a, a, maybe a new glass shop or a new uh, roofing company or a new landscape company. Because if we don't have um, our people excited and engaged and feeling cared about, that's quickly retaining people is more is, is as important as ever right now. So I'm hearing you. What I love about this is it's called internal and external marketing. External is out there to the world, but internal is how are we marketing to ourselves, to our people, to our team. And don't take it for granted. Just because you love your company, just because it's your baby, and you started it with your glass cutter and your bicycle in 1898, it's not just going to build itself, right? And so I, right. I really love what you just hit on. So that's one thing that, I man, if, if you're all listening to this podcast today and you go and you say, okay, I'm going to apply some of these things. If you need some help, please reach out to Max, you know, hire him to come in and help you. But if you don't, you know, it has to be a plan one day at a time, right? So that's, that's fantastic. And marketing is so important. It's not um, gathering more um, business all the time. It's just, it's a storytelling. Marketing is telling a story. I think people think, oh, where do I need to spend my money to get money? And that's not today's marketing. Today is telling the story being part of the story, letting the story tell itself, and then people will make their own choice. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, what's another, um, outside of, of marketing, internal and external, what's another key component that you see businesses um, struggling with? I think that a lot of businesses struggle, and it's, it's similar to kind of what we were talking about, but I think a lot of businesses struggle paying too much attention to their competitors and not enough oh. attention to themselves. My, my big thing, and this is another thing that came from my brother and my dad was, you know, you have no competition. Your only competition is yourself. You know, pay attention to what you do. Do it the best you can do it. Doesn't matter what the guy across the street's doing. Doesn't matter what the, the, big, the big guy, the big, you know, gorilla in town that has, all, you know, all the trucks and all the, the bells and whistles. It doesn't matter. If you're doing everything you're supposed to do, you will be, you know, you will come out fine. You know, if you're, what? if you're really focused on yourself, too many times I run into folks that are like, you know, we've got to go after these guys and we've got to figure out what they're doing. And it's like, no, you need to figure out what you're doing and, and do it better. And you need to find better ways to do, do your, do your job. So I think a lot of times that that's a, that's another, you know, angle that I run into when I do strategic analysis with people, you know, is, is we sit down and it's, it's, you know, we, we really do, we go through those strengths and weaknesses and that little, that little, you know, game that some people would call a SWOT analysis, but it really does help you know, you know, put that, that focus back on you. What do we need to do better? Uh, and that's a, that's a big thing in business right now uh, that, that not enough people do pay attention to themselves. They're too busy paying attention to their competitors. Wow. That's fantastic. Because you know what? The world's changing. You're, we're not competing with other glass shops. You know, my background in shower enclosures, I'm competing with HGTV. Yep. I'm competing with Amazon home services. I'm competing with Lowe's wonderful website, <laughs> you know, pictures. And stuff. The and augmented to, reality. Yeah. And I have to then not only tell them why I can compete with that, but I also am going to do a better job when you get to the home. Um, I, you're competing with technology, competing with all sorts of everybody, but 
the stinky guy down the street with right. you know that doesn't isn't going to be on time. I'm not even worried about that. And you know the thing that we're competing with the most. And if you guys are listening, if everyone's listening, you want to listen to go to my last podcast that we were posting. Um, we're fighting between our ears. We're fighting yes. ourselves. We're fighting our own perspectives. And Max can help you with that because the truth is, when you have someone like like you, Max, who you're not in the grind every day, and you're able to look. Um, it said best, like a great counselor, right? It, it, or a great coach, you know, they're up above the grass, you're inside the weeds and they can kind of point you which direction you're going. That's the, that's a teamwork approach They're Absolutely. They're, you're, they're, you know, and, and you're working together like an air traffic controller. And so I think we get afraid of consultants. I think we get afraid of, oh, is the investment worth it? And I'm telling all of you, man, if, if you want to break your cycle of your own mind of what you think is going on because your dad and your grandfather or the guy that taught you, to, you know, the one guy you worked for or a girl, we got to stop this because otherwise you're going to steamroll. But on the flip side of it, right, Max, like what an opportunity to be in the business. Employ some technologies, engage in LinkedIn, think a little differently, create a customer experience. Like, yep. There's a huge upside. And let's talk about that a little bit too. Um, you know, you got these new people hopefully listening to to this podcast and saying, I'm thinking about maybe getting into the services industry. I'm thinking about getting into the trades. And maybe I was a waiter or a waitress or a barista or whatever. And it's just time for a change. And I want to start my business. What do you say to that that group, your 21-year-old daughter? What do you say to our next generation? I, you know, I, I tell them that th this is a, this is an industry that that does n so many cool things. First and foremost, you know, I mean, glass is life. Glass is everywhere, and 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 I mean, you know, until you you know actually turn your eyes to it and see it, you know, you, you know, you don't really realize it because it just kind of you know melds into the background. So first and foremost is it, it's a really cool product that that makes a difference. Can you imagine a world without glass? You know, you know, not being able to look at look out a window, you know, looking at a brick wall all day, you know, you know, the, the, the light that can come through it and, and all the advantages that, that come with it. And that includes even mirrors and things like that. Glass is, is, is a key component of all that. You know, plastic will never cut it. You know, I mean, it's it's warped and it scratches. And I mean, this is this is where it's at. So first and foremost is look at the, the core product you're working with. And then second is this is an industry that is is incredible relationship based industry. It is as much of a fraternity and a sorority in a good way that I could ever come up with. I don't know, and, and I work with a, a, some other industries. I have not seen, and I don't know if anybody has the camaraderie and the collaboration that the glass and glazing industry has. Yeah, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes you get into an online forum and, and people are fighting, especially if it's a union versus non-union sort of thing, but you have that anywhere. But everybody will agree on, hey, they like what they do. They get along, they share you know, they, they work for the betterment of, of, of all for the most part. And so, so that fraternity and that sorority uh, of this industry, and you go to any sort of event, you know, whether it's a local uh, construction specifier show or a big show like Glass Build America, and it's the networking, and it's the people gathering and, and having it, you know, having a bite to eat and having a drink and being able to share these stories uh, with each other and share best practices. It, it's unbelievable. And, and again, I worked in TV. I've, I have clients that are in in real estate and in insurance and a dance studio, things like that. They don't have that. They don't even come close to right. that that we have right. here. So I think there's something to be said for that. And I think again, you know, Tom Jackson of Steel Encounters, uh, a big glazer in Utah, really pushed about you know the the culture. Culture is bigger than compensation right now for for younger people. Mm -hmm. Yes, compensation is important. It's always important, but they want a culture. And I got to say that, yeah, we do have our warts, but for the most part, our culture as an industry and many, many companies in this industry, this is a great, great place to work in a skilled yeah. trades world. Yes, it's tough, but it's, but it's better than, than laying bricks, in my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, and, it's, it, it, and, so, and it's better being involved in something that really, really makes a difference. And we do. That's awesome. I, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head that there is this um, opportunity you know, and, and man, I, I'm so tired of hearing that you can't find labor. You can't find labor. You can't find help. Yes, there's a reality there. I mean, look at the restaurants and stuff. But also one of my friends said to me yesterday, yeah, they're all working somewhere for the restaurants. Example, it's like if you don't pay people, if you don't create a place that wants to work, if you don't 
create your efficiencies in your business and then turn those profits back towards people development, that's up to us. That's all between our ears. That's all us as leadership. There's plenty of money flowing around our economy. How do we make that work? And I think what you just said was amazing. I mean, so many glass shops, um, my number one thing lately, Max has been telling people, hey, do you offer 312s? Do you offer 410s? Do you offer three-day weekends? To, and I mean, you're, who, they're already there at seven drinking coffee. <laughs> they're usually there cleaning up till five. If you ask a lot of installers, as long as it's obviously safe on their body and they're not working hard. If you ask them, hey, would you prefer to work a couple longer days and have a whole day off to rest? Most of them are like, I, I can do that. How about, how about starting at 10 a.m. and then working until 8 p.m. so you're actually putting things in people's homes when they're home <laughs> and they're right. far less no-shows. Also, more importantly, tools, bid clips, smart builder, um, you know, job or service tight, any of that. How about tools where you can be more efficient? Technology platforms. I hate this. Well, we don't really know computers. This is 2021. Oh, yeah. You can learn and we can help. And so many of us will help. And, and I think that there's just all this opportunity that it, it just gets overlooked. And they're like, well, we're just too busy. Well, you're, if you're too busy doing it poorly and just dealing with the old way in a new world, I ask everybody to think, okay, well, is it time to reprioritize what you're actually working on? And so yeah, I don't want to sit here and beat the pulpit because that's not what we're about. But it's, it's, it's important um, for me as a, as a sort of younger person in this industry. And it's really important for my two little daughters who are four and one that by the time they get there, this is a viable industry that they can do really well in. No, and I, I, I think you nailed it on all those levels. And the other thing is, is that we do have things that, you know, for this generation that's coming up that is so uh, focused on, on, you know, you know, not focused, but they like their video games. Uh, yeah. You know, we have CAD needs for CAD, like you wouldn't believe. Oh CAD is yeah. a big video game. It's you, you know what I mean? <laughs> it, exactly. And, and I mean, there's so many CAD openings, and, and, you know, and then, you know, project management openings. I mean, again, there are the younger minds, you know, that are so organized who can sit there and, and, and you know, set out a, a plan for their Instagram, you know, for three yeah. solid days on everything they're doing. That's a, a project management mind. We just got to bring is, it over it here. I, I love that. I never thought about that that way. That's fantastic. And, you know, and, and then, you know, for example, a lot of our users inside of the big clip side of things, we have dashboards where you can actually track people on how they're doing. You can create fun competition. And I know a lot of you are like, well, I don't like to pay my people commission. I'm not even saying that. I'm saying track what they're doing. It does it automatically, a lot of these programs. And then reward them. Just say high five. Give them a hug. Tell them, great job. They This next generation, their gaming generation, likes to compete. And they do it in a really kind way because they still do it with all their friends every day. Whether it's, you know, whether it's sports betting or racing or... Yep. Or playing games. So I think I think you're really hitting on something important, and it's so easy to just write them off, just like our grandparents did to us. Sometimes we gotta break that cycle because the ones that don't write them off, they're usually the ones that we're going to these shows. Like, man, they've got something great going on in their operation, <laughs> and so it's time for all of us to be that that person. And uh, and and both Max and I are here. We want to help all of you do this. We understand this is not easy. And so whether that's reaching out to Today in Trades, to us in the comments, messaging or emailing me directly, which most of the time I'm going to punch you right over to Max. But reach out to Soul Source Consultants if you're having any questions about this. And and so Max, if someone wants to reach out to you, let's kind of talk about that a little bit too. Um, what does that look like? I mean, I think sometimes people get afraid. Like, oh, is he going to bill me for every six minutes just to, to no. talk? If someone is listening to this and they're like, I just really want to talk to Max a little bit further about my operation, no matter what your business is, um, how do they do that? What's the next step for them? Sure. So, you know, everything I do is customized, you know, and that's the one thing that sometimes consultants get a bad rap on is just that they have a, you know, a, 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 a one, one size fits all thing and they just plug it into somebody else and, or they re, repurpose a report and give it to the person and everything I do is custom. And so I always like to have a good kickoff phone call, no charge. We talk about what your needs are. We, we see if I'm a fit. Uh, and, and then what I do is I, I put the, put together a presentation for you of here's my menu of, of services that I think would work for you. And you could pick out what you want. And then, you know, mm -hmm. you have that budget certainty, you know, I'm not going to give you something, you know, that you don't want that you're not seeing, you know, everything that, that I can do, you're going to choose. 
So we have a good conversation, you get a presentation, uh, and then we move on from there. And, and I have plenty of people that I still talk to that, that, you know, will say, Hey, you know, I'm not ready yet, but what do you think of this? And I'm, I'm a softy because I want them to get better. I, I don't, you know, I, I, I want to give them some, some, some information I probably should charge, but I don't because my thought process, I'm a karma guy. I, I, I am a big karma guy. I believe helping others will always come back to, to, to be good for me. And so if it's one question and somebody says, Hey, I need a source for this, you know, I'm going to, you know, find it for them, you know, and, and I'm not going to send them a bill. You know, I, that's just not what I do. Mm-hmm. Hoping that, you know, when they have something big come up or, you know, it's something that they could use me on that they will. And that's happened in the last 10 years. So I've seen awesome. that proof of happening. Uh, best way to reach me is um, the best email is uh, is max at soul source, S-O-L-E, uh, S-O-U-R-C-E dot info. Uh, max at soul source dot info. That's the easiest email to get me at. Uh, and, and, and you can always find me on LinkedIn and, and please link in with me. Uh, even if you have no desire to use my services, I want to expand my network. So please link in with me. Uh, I would love to, uh, you know, again, add to my world and, uh, and, and see your post and learn about you along the way, because I am, I'm always learning. Awesome. And we're going to put all this in the, uh, the link below as well. If those of you are listening, you know, great. Just write that down when you get back. Um, but also let's, you know, the, the other thing that's great is, is Max has a, um, a blog called from the fabricator and it's just a great blog. I had um, actually read it quite a bit um, through my years as a, uh, um, as a glass shop. I never thought I'd, I'd meet Max. And actually the funny part was I never really like looked at who you were. Cause I would just kind of see it and read it and just kind of go fast. And I'm a, kind of a fast reader. And then I, I, I got to meet him at Texpo and I, I, I didn't realize it was him. <laughs> I was like, Oh, this guy's a really cool guy. I talked to him. I turned around and my, another guy, you know, Andrew Herring, he was like, that was Max Perelstein. But I was like, that's like that. He's like the walking icon. And I had to go back and quickly grovel and ask for the autograph. And so I, he's so humble that, um, it's easy to miss. And, uh, and so I just want you guys to, you know, our glass nerds on, uh, in our um, listening base, you know, hop over there, read that blog. Um, I know you might think, well, it's just for the big fabricators, the glorious fabricators. It's not, he's always got something in there that you can take away. He has guests that come on that have been in your shoes at all levels. So please engage with that. Um, and then, you know, on that note, Max, as we kind of move forward into 2022, what, um, do you see the horizon going forward? So for our listening base, what are a few things that you think um, are important for us to look forward to in this next year from what you've seen and any way we can prepare for the uncertainties of this next 365 days? Well, I think, I think the biggest thing is, is, the, is the challenge right now is the supply chain. Uh, you know, we're all feeling it. And especially in the glass industry, glass is very, very tight and it's not going to get better. Uh, it, 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 you know, it's, it's going to be like this or worse, unfortunately, for the next year. Uh, until things start to settle down a little bit. And it's, you know, it, it's, it, it forces you to have to really communicate up and down that supply chain, which means you've got to get accurate information. You know, if you're, if, if you're a glass shop, uh, which I assume is probably most of the people that are listening to this, you've got to lean on your fabricator to say, hey, I, you know, just tell me the truth on when I'm going to get my glass because I have to communicate with my customer accurately. Uh, don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what I need to hear. And then you have to plan accordingly uh, because glass is a problem. Uh, it's not a made up, you know, there are people like, oh, I'm not having a problem getting glass and good for them right now. Uh, but it is a problem for many in this country and, it, and it's not going away. And it's just because we can't, you know, uh, building a glass float plant is not something that could happen overnight. There's only one in North America that's on the books that's being built and it's in Winnipeg, uh, Manitoba, which is not going to be a huge help for somebody who's in Alabama or in Florida or, or, or on the East Coast. Uh, and uh, so, so we're not going to see a big jump in capacity uh, with, with regards to glass. Um, yes, things on the residential side may slow down a little bit, which, which could open up some glass, but I don't see that happening, uh, especially for the folks that are listening to this, because I think interior renovations are going to still be strong. Uh, more glass is being used in the house with showers, with railings, uh, with stairs, you know, anything to let that light come through, uh, is, is happening, uh, partitions. Uh, so glass is, 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 is important and we're growing it, but we're also short in supply of it. So it's a challenge. So you have to communicate. So that's, that's, that's the, the, the number one takeaway is, is beware on the glass situation, communicate up and down your supply chain, uh, because that is crucial. Uh, and, and then, uh, you know, keep your eye on all of the new uh, technology that's coming down the pike. Don't be, don't be afraid of things like transparent solar. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, that is a product that is now coming very, very close to commercialization. And homeowners that have any desire to have, uh, you know, less reliance on the grid, uh, they may not want big, ugly solar panels on the top of their house. But if you can put in a transparent window that is, is generating some energy for their house, I think they're going to go for that. Yeah, uh, so, so, so keep your eye on technology. Uh, and, and, and that's really, really important because you don't want to be left behind. Oh, very good. I, you know, uh, I get frustrated about the labor problem because I think we can fix that. We can't fix supply chains. You know, that just doesn't happen overnight. So I really appreciate that. I don't want this podcast to always be, oh, just fix your brain and your heart. I'm, that is mostly what it is. But supply chain, you can't always fix. And I, yesterday we had a customer, um, clients that have even over on the big clip side that you know, it was like, oh, I'm refinancing my house and I, I, I can't wait the four to six weeks. And it was great. One of our, our, our sales, one of our um, service station team members was like, hey, well, I'm going to send you a full breakout cap imagery of this project. You can pay for the whole thing and you can take that with you to the closing table, to the appraiser. And they'll know that it's already committed. It's already done. It's already paid. And you can close. And she was just like, oh, you can just hear the sense of relief. Okay, I can wait the four weeks. That just solved the problem. So that goes to what you said. That's communication down the supply chain versus over-promising and under-delivering. And we have this ability to communicate correctly and then take that communication, go ahead and add about 10% buffer, maybe 15, just to be safe. You know, it's not lying. It's being thoughtful to customers and then deliver that deliver that to them. And so I think that that's important for us to, to practice that, to learn it, to discuss it. And so I'm, I'm glad you, you spoke to that because that is a, that's a challenge. And then the other side is tackle the jobs you can take care of. Maybe if you're waiting on some big projects, tackling repair, tackling service work, tackling reglazes, et cetera, anything you can, that you can handle, prioritize so that when those big jobs come. So a lot of it is shifting your, your job load a little bit. So really great stuff, Max. And, um, I know our listening base took away this morning some some free nuggets are worth a lot of money and so from you and I just uh, I appreciate you and so everybody please go to Soul Source Consultants um, please reach out to Max and at, at at basic read his blog and engage because ever since I've started getting engaged with him um, I've learned a lot every single week every single every time something is posted I, I take something away so. Um, thank you for that, Max. And I want to thank you from all the whole industry. Thank you for what you do for all of us. Thank you for being that true um, selfless promoter. And and we all need to learn from you. And we'd all like to be like you and at a, at a level, to, in our local level, as well as our national level. So thank you. Well, no, I I, I appreciate that. And um, again, like you, you, you said in the introduction, or I said, I'm humbled by it. But uh, what you, 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 Jim, are doing and what your family had done in the past and what you're doing now with things like bid clips and in, in this podcast and spreading, you know, good, efficient information, helping companies get better, uh, you know, taking people to, to the next level. Uh, both personally and professionally, uh, you know, you are, you're a big part of this, uh, and a big part of our future in, in making us better. And uh, I, that's, I admire the heck out of you. And I, I wish I had like a quarter of your energy because, because <laughs> I don't do plug in at night and then you, yeah. you know, you're ready to go the next day. Cause I mean, you are constantly on fire and I love that. So, well, when you gone through so much adversity in your life, as I have, it's easy to get fired up about the good things that we have. And I you really well. just, I appreciate those words, but honestly, I, I just get fired up by people. I, I love to be part of fun stuff, you know, and this is a fun industry and we have a fun little company. So it's easy. If you love people, it's easy. And I appreciate that. And I hope all of you know that in your own way, listening, you have people that love you. You have people around you that you can connect with. And so to make that happen. And uh, um, until next time, thank you, uh, Max. And this was Today in Trades. Thank you.